Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to perform a vibration analysis on a concrete slab in RAM concept. Free vibration of undamped structures occurs when the structure is displaced to an initial displacement, released, and then allowed to vibrate freely. It is related only to the stiffness and mass of the structure. In this video, we are going to show you how to set up your structure for performing a vibration analysis and review the results to see if it's within the acceptable limits. For this training, we will be performing a vibration analysis for an elevated concrete slab that's already been created in RAM concept. This concrete slab contains a main slab, concrete beams, slab depressions, openings, drop caps, and concrete columns. In addition to modeling the entire slab system, we've also gone ahead and modeled all of the design strips, generated the finite element mesh, and all of the superimposed loading for the model. Now that we're talking about loading, let's go ahead and take a look at the self mass of the structure. The structure self mass will always be considered automatically in the analysis, which can be adjusted by setting the density for loads for the loads property in the concrete material properties. In some cases, there is additional mass permanently in place that should be considered in the analysis of the frequencies and mode shapes. This additional mass can be drawn on the additional mass layer located in the vibrations folder. This layer will allow you to define area loads, line loads, and point loads that will be converted to mass for vibration analysis purposes. To navigate to this layer, we're going to go to our Layers menu bar item, select Vibrations, and then find the additional mass loadings plan. Here you can use any number of those layer specific tools to model the loadings that should be included in the frequency calculations and the vibration analysis. For this exercise, we're going to add an additional area load that we want considered. In our layer specific toolbar, we'll now double click on the mass area load icon and specify the quantity of mass. We will specify FZ of 10 pounds a square foot and then click OK. Using our cursor and noticing that this icon is still selected, we'll then model our loads on the plan. And for this exercise, we're going to go outside the slab boundary. And then during the analysis, RAM concept will automatically trim this load to the edge of slab. Before we can perform a vibration analysis, we must first specify the vibration criteria, which is found through the criteria menu. In the calculation options dialog, we're then going to select the vibrations tab and walk our way through the different options. The first option is the number of modes. In a vibration analysis, is it important to calculate enough modes to capture the complete dynamic response? This generally would include modes with frequencies up to about 12 to 15 hertz. By default, the number is set to 25. In this exercise, we will keep the default value. Then, after we perform the vibration analysis, we will verify that enough modes were considered in the vibration analysis through the vibration frequencies table. The next option we'll find is a dynamic concrete modulus factor. This represents the ratio of the dynamic modulus of elasticity of concrete to the static modulus of elasticity. The dynamic modulus affects the stiffness of the structure. In RAM concept, the default value for the dynamic concrete modulus factor is 1.2. The next option we're going to find is our stiffness matrix. You can choose either the global stiffness matrix or a load history stiffness matrix, representing either the maximum short-term load, sustained load, or the final instantaneous load. If a load history matrix is selected, a load history analysis should be performed prior to performing the vibration analysis. The next set of calculation options that you're going to specify is your footfall analysis response information. First, we're going to make sure our footfall analysis response checkbox is selected to perform this type of analysis. Next, we're going to move on to our minimum and maximum footstep frequencies. RAM concept calculates the footfall response of structures using assumed dynamic loadings that were derived from a large number of experimentally measured footfall force time histories. 
These structures are shown that normal walking range from about 1.5 to 2.5 steps per second. We'll use this as a basis for entering the minimum and maximum footstep frequencies expected in this structure. Next, we're going to find our damping ratio. RAM concept uses a constant damping ratio in the calculation of all modes. Typical damping ratios for concrete structures range from about 0.01 to 0.02 for bare concrete floors and 0.02 to 0.035 for concrete floors with typical fit out. We're going to enter a damping ratio for this structure of 0.03. Below that, we're going to find our response type information, and we have checkboxes for resonant response and impulsive response. When the natural frequency of a structure is low, it is possible for the dynamic response to increase over time and resonance of the structure can result. This is most likely to occur when the natural frequency of the structure closely matches the excitation frequency. To check this type of response, we're going to make sure this checkbox is selected. Next, we have our impulsive response. When the natural frequency of a structure is high, larger than about 12 to 15 hertz, the dynamic response of each footfall tends to dissipate almost entirely before the next footfall. This type of response is referred to as impulsive, since the buildup of, of response due to resonance is not likely in the frequency range. In RAM concept, you consider both the resonant response and the impulsive response. When performing a vibration analysis and both types of responses can be individually selected through this checkbox. Next, we're going to enter our resonant response options. The first option here is to select your analysis type. You can select either the simplified or fast calculation or the modal analysis. The simplified analysis method uses a fast calculation technique that is generally suitable for day-to-day -day design where RMS velocity values are not required. The modal analysis method uses a comprehensive dynamic modal superposition analysis, which is suitable for structures that are vibrationally sensitive or if RMS velocity values are required. Next, we're gonna see the duration and time increment information. The duration and time increment fields define the number of time points that are used to calculate the modal analysis. The duration should generally be set to capture at least 30 cycles of forcing, and the time increment should be set to at least 10 times larger than the fourth harmonic of the fastest walking frequency. These options will only be applicable when the modal analysis option is selected. For this training today, we're going to be selecting the analysis type for the simplified or fast calculation. Next, you can enter weight of person. And here you'd want to enter the static weight of the person that's going to be walking. For this exercise, we're going to assume a static weight of 200 pounds. Finally, we're going to find our maximum natural frequency. This will define the ma maximum natural frequency that is used in the dynamic analysis for the resonant response. The final piece of criteria we're going to specify is our excitation nodes and our response nodes for the vibration analysis. Now in RAM concept, there are a number of different combinations of excitation and response nodes available for your analysis. For excitation nodes, you can choose from excitation at all nodes, just the critical nodes, or the specified nodes. If you select the critical nodes, RAM concept will consider excitation only at nodes where the expected response factor is given, is greater than or equal to the excitation response factor threshold. If you select the specified nodes, then RAM concept will consider excitation only at nodes indicated on the excitation area plan. The excitation area plan is available within the layers and vibration analysis menu item and on the excitation area plan. You can use the excitation area icon to select which nodes you want to consider. Next, we have our response nodes, and you have several options available here. You can set the response to all degrees of freedom at all nodes. You can set the response at the vertical degree of freedom at all nodes, or at the vertical degree of freedom only at the excited nodes. Here we're going to select the excitation nodes set to all nodes and the response nodes to the vertical degree of, free of freedom at only excitated nodes.
Once we're done specifying our vibration analysis, we can click OK, and then we're going to save this model. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.